Over the past couple of weeks, I've seen this prompt engineering courses propping up in marketplaces all over the internet as if all of a sudden these gurus have learned their inner workings and are now the authority over something they didn't even know existed a month ago. So I'm calling it out. Prompt engineering is mostly BS and these courses are mostly a scam, so don't waste your time. And I'm going to just show you in 30 minutes what real prompt engineering looks like and it's probably not what you think they are or what the gurus want you to think they are. It's not about writing detailed instructions in clear English grammar or those kind of nonsense. I mean, that would help, but don't go around charging $500 on your prompt engineering courses for that because it's just not right. So what is prompt engineering from a software perspective? It's basically a way to get your language model to output what is expected of it. The correctness, the factuality, the relevancy to what you need this output for. So if I'm asking a language model for a JSON object, I want it to be accurate, to be correct, but I also want it to be valid JSON. If I'm asking a language model for a SQL query, same thing, it needs to be a valid query syntax and not just um, notationally, but also semantically correct. So the first step is to introduce some sort of prompt design framework, a pseudo language or templating language to help you express your intent to this language model. Now I'm going to be using Guidance, which is an open source project by Microsoft that allows you to do this prompt development using something that feels like a templating language. So first step, let's install Guidance and then let's hop over to its GitHub page to see how it works. So I'm going to activate my environment and I'm going to say pip install guidance and that's about it. So this is guidance on GitHub it enables you to control modern language models more effectively and efficiently than traditional prompting or chain. Let me zoom in a bit. Guidance programs allows you to interleave generation, prompting and logical control into a single continuous flow matching how the language model actually processes the text. So it also says here the simple output structures like chain of thought and its many variants have been shown to improve LLM performance. So that's what guidance is. Let's go into our code and write some code and see how um, all of this fits together. So let's go ahead and just open up a new file to work with. I'm going to call it demo12.py um, because I'm just been using the same repo. Now, if you want to go ahead and download all of this stuff, it's all on my GitHub repo. I have a YouTube series, long running series. I think it's like now video number 11, number 12 now, where we just look at all kinds of things you can do with LLM. We can learn about what an LLM is, learn about embeddings, learn about vector store and all of these building blocks of LLM, right? If you want to learn about that, go to GitHub, go and look at the repo. You can start, you can fork it. I'll make a copy of that. You can also follow along the series on my YouTube channel. All of that is free. All of this stuff, data sets, code, all of this is free on my GitHub and on YouTube, all right? And if you're not new here, then you kind of know what to expect. So let's begin by importing our environment variables. So I have an env file in here that it has my OpenAI API key and stuff. Now you don't actually strictly need to use OpenAI API. You can use pretty much any LM that is supported. I'm gonna give you a few examples here, but I wanna show you that if you have your environment in your env file, what you do is you can say from.f, so you want to bring that in. You also want to install this if you don't have that, then you say from load.f, then you just want to say load.f, right? So this is how you actually look at all the env files and bring in your keys, your environment variables, right? Your keys or, or your secrets, all of that, and you're loading them in. And now you could go ahead and already start to print your stuff out. If you have your environment variables, you can print them out, right? Now, we installed guidance, we need to bring that in as well, so let's go ahead and say import guidance. Okay, so this is something you need to install as well. So that's the only two things you need to do for this video. Now, I'm going to give you a really simple example uh, before we begin, right? So first of all, I need to tell this guidance what LLM to use to power all of these programs together. And so I can say guidance and I will set my LLM. And this, there are plenty of choices here, I'm going to show you a few choices. Now, if you look at this, I have Azure OpenAI, I have LM session mock, mock is just a mock-up, just for testing, open AI, uh, transformers, there's plenty of choices in here. You can use a few, I'm gonna show you some examples later. I can show you some maybe open source ones as well, but I'm gonna first use a uh, text DevNC, right? And then later on in this video, I'm gonna switch it to another LM and I'm gonna show you what happened with a chat-based model, for example, like uh, ChatGPT, for example, that's also one option you can use. So let's begin with this. Now, if you've seen my OpenAI video, you know what happened next is that you just basically call OpenAI, you pass in your prompt, you say, well, using this model, go and get that result. Or if you've seen my Langchain or Llama Index video, you know what to do as well. It's pretty similar workflow here, right? Now, this guidance is all about this prompt engineering. It's all about prompt design, right? So let's take a look at how we want to call it. We want to say something like call the program and I want to pass in my prompt. So I want to pass in like, for example, you know, what is one plus one or what, what is your question in here, what have you, right? Now, this program is not defined, so we need to define a program. And so the program will look something like program uh, equals to guidance, and let's set that up. So if I want to ask, what are the, let's say, the top 10 most common commands used in the OS operating system? So I want to ask this question. So I could use this, and in here, I'm just going to use a simple string to say, what are the top 10 most common commands used 
in the and then let's say Linux operating system. Now I don't want to have Linux being hard coded, so I want to actually pass this in so that the user calling this program could specify that. So I could say OS equals to Linux, and then now I don't have to hard code this anymore, just use templating to say OS. Right? If you work with Jinja or Django, you've probably seen this before. Flask uses Jinja, Django has a very simple the handlebar uh, syntax. If you use any of those handlebar syntax languages, you send this kind of uh, a bit quirky, but uh, you know that, that's what it does here. Yeah. It's saying this is a template. So it says fit this in if the result equals this and can print result. And that's kind of the simple hello world, right? Um, basically called OS equals Linux. What are the top 10 most common commands used in the Linux operating system? Now, of course, up to this point, I'm not showing you anything fancy about guidance at all. You're like, what is the point of guidance at all? If you're going to just do this, you could just do it in Vanilla, Python, and, and just call OpenAI, and you're right. So let's go ahead and introduce some maybe layers by layers of complexity. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give you an example of that. Uh, maybe start off with prepending some text there. So I want to say something like, here is a common command, and I want to give you some examples. So I'll put things into a single quotation because I use double quotation up here. So here is a common command and this is what I want to do. Again, you see that handlebar templating, the curly brackets, and I want to say generate. So gen is a way for guidance to tell the LM to generate stuff in here, right? And whatever results in here, you could give it a name. So kind of think of it like variable. So if I want to call these commands, I can do commands. And if I do that, now I could go ahead and add commands to this, this will be the key. There will be a key called commands, and that is from here. This is whatever we generated, it's gonna see in here. And I'm gonna later when we print all this, it makes sense, right? Then I could say, don't just show me one, but show me 10 of them. Um, and, and then you stop at what? So I wanna say stop at, in this case here, again, single quotation, I wanna say stop at the end of the quotation mark. So this is saying that if you generate a sentence, this is where you end it. So giving it a, a way to know like, okay, this is the end of one iteration, now move to the next one, right? And how many of them do I want? I want to have 10. And of course you can stop here, but if you want to change the temperature, if you want to do anything of that sort, you can have it here and say, oh, I want to change the temperature to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.75, um, it's up to you. All right, just to make things clear, I'm going to add some dashes, and then we're going to save all of that. We're going to just make sure we're in the right environment, clear the screen, and then we're going to run this. So demo12.py And Davins003 can't be mapped because there is no Davins, there is only Davinci. So let's run it again. Sometimes the error is so obvious and you're like, ah, how did I miss that? All right, so let's run it again. All right, and this is our answer. So let's see. So first of all, it prints the result commands and this is the commands in here. And it takes all of this and it put them into the value of this key. So result kind of a dictionary with a key of commands maps to this one and that's the value. So you have ls, list directory contents, cd, change directory, and we move files, copy files. Okay, so all of this is not bad. All of this is pretty good. So you see over time the answer gets a bit more random, but it's still the same structure is there. So number one is still ls, then it's cd, then it's mv, then it's cp, then it's rm, then it's man, uh, man stands for manual, and then grab, and then sudo, fine and then chmod that's for you to change permissions and stuff. So same thing here, right? L number one, LS, then CD and stuff, and each one of them give it a, a next line. So that's that's okay. But let's say if I wanna ask for only the top five. So I'm actually gonna change this to N equals to one now. I'm gonna ask just for one. And if instead of top 10, I'm gonna ask for top five. So what are the top five most common commands used in an OS operating system? And now I'm gonna move this to a next line. So this is not just a here is a common command, but now this is going to be here are the top five commands, right? Or maybe just be more explicit, common commands. Temperature is still going to be the same. Now, the only one thing I want to change here is if it's going to keep on going, how do I cause it to stop? Now, I could change this stop here to say that you stop when it gets into number six. So I would say something like when it goes to escape the end and then say six stop. So what this is going to do is it's going to find this and it say this is a stop character. When you come to N6, then you want to stop there because then it results in the top 5. So this is one way to add some sort of assurance to yourself to say that, hey, by the time you reach to N6, and you know that because I printed 10 iteration and each of the iteration, it always get to this point. You see N6 and you see N6 in here and you see N6 in here again, you see N6 in here again and N6 again. 
So you always see the N6. So I, I'm putting N6 in here because I see the Tesla pattern and then I escape that by adding a backslash in front. So here I'm saying that you want to generate the top 5. So go ahead and generate as much as you want, but only up to the 5 because once you get to the stop, you want to stop there. So let's run this program and see what the difference this uh, result would, would be compared to the earlier result. Run that. And now we have the what are the top 5 most common commands used in a Linux operating system. So first I print the commands. This is here. Then I print the result. So you don't actually need this if you don't want to. You could just remove them. Um, but here's the result, right? LS used to list the contents of a directory. CD used to change directories. MV used to move or rename files. RM used to delete files. Man used to view the manual page for command. That's pretty good and it's pretty tidy. And you see that the stop works here as well, right? If I put five, then it would stop at the fifth because it would just stop right here, right before M. Man, so you see LS, CD, MV, RM. All right, and you can up the temperature a bit to try and experiment on your own. I'm gonna keep that back to six. So that was just a basic introductory, but let's move up now and actually see some of the guidance syntax. And it's pretty well what you can do, you know, in terms of the prompt engineering, prompt design kind of things. It gives you very clear ideas of how you can improve the quality of your output and you can specify them in this very clear templating language. So I'm gonna show you some examples here. Now, if I go back to top 10 most common, common commands used in the OS operating system, I could maybe add a few more details here. I could say, I want you to provide a one-liner description for each command, right? Now, the other syntax I can do here is I could do this block and every time I start, I use the pound sign or the hashtag, right? The pound sign, I said, I could, this is a block and then I want to end the block. And to end the block, I would do something like this. So that's kind of how you create a encapsulation and a block of logic in here, right? So if I want this block to be hidden from the output, so I don't want a result to include that because if you look at the terminal here, it always includes that text here, right? So he says, uh, what are the top five? Here are the top five. Now, if I want to hide that, I could actually hide that by specifying this to hidden equals to true. So this is useful for if I want to prompt engineer stuff, but I don't want it to be included in the output of my of the, of the result. So I don't want that, right? I could do this. So I could use this uh, as a way to maybe specify some examples. I could say a few examples, uh, maybe a few example commands would be, now to make this a bit challenging, I don't want it to have like one dot. So for example, I want it to have this syntax of like bracket like this. I want it to have this bracket or maybe this one even, right? I say, um, give me something that shows like that. PWD prints the current working directory. And we move the file. Or maybe we can just copy here, literally just use to move or rename file. So uh, use to move or rename files. Just literally copying what I have in the, in the beginning there, right? In the, the earlier iteration. In fact, I don't even need to, I can be even lazier and just ask it to generate more for me. So I could also use the gen here. So what this is gonna do is like, okay, I'm gonna give you two examples, but I want you to generate, let's say another two examples. So here I wanna say, give this name examples. You can name it anything you want, honestly. Let's say name examples. Then I wanna say n equals to two. So this is gonna say, try to look at my examples here and try to complete that, try to generate another two examples. And then of course you wanna say, stop when you meet a quotation mark. So stop there. And then you wanna say, maybe give it a max tokens here so it doesn't generate too much. I just maybe put 20, just enough, and finally up the temperature a little bit, um, just to experiment, okay? So here I'm asking it to first generate this, but all of this should be hidden. So even if it generate that, it's not gonna actually be shown. So if I wanna see that, I will need to go ahead and maybe add a few print statements. So this will be result, but I want this result to have the key of examples. Because mind you, in the result itself, this is not gonna be included. So I need to accept specifically specify the key here examples in order to see what is being printed in here. Now I could say, okay, here are the common commands. So this is kind of like a warm up. This is kind of warming it up. It says uh, this is what I want you to do. This is my expected output. Now here are the common commands. So by doing this, I basically give it a few more examples to prompt this is the format I need because maybe I'm marking an assignment. I need this to be a certain format or maybe I'm using this in some sort of parser. There's a downstream pipeline, you know, to process text and stuff. So maybe there's something, there's a reason why I want it to be in this format. But by prompting it first, I give it more context to work with and give it more examples. Now, 
I can say go ahead and generate that for me. Now I don't even want to leave this for chance because for some reason this is really important. I need it to start with a square bracket and then one and then two and then three. So for, for some reason that's just very important to me. So I could do, I could say take each one of them, generate each and then immediately close. See what I like to do is I like to immediately close, kind of like HTML, you know, when you start uh, uh, opening block, you want to close that uh, closing tag. So opening tag, closing tag. And th this, I give it another name. I'm going to call it commands. So I could go all the way down. See, so okay, print the commands out for me as well. If you'd be so kind, bring this down, go back up. And then now you could generate, um, I don't know, 10 iterations. I guess 10 is good because we asked for top 10. And this is where you want it to generate your examples, right? So you could do a gen. So I could say something like open quotation. Then I could say gen and then generate examples. So each one of them is just gonna be one iteration. So generate one iteration. And so the way I would do that is I'll say this, right? This refers to sort of this iteration of this gen each. Then the stop is still the same though, right? Stop is just basically gain the end quotation mark. I could now specify some sort of structure around the output. So suppose I don't want it to generate this kind of output anymore, right? I want a description to be after the word description. So I could say description. And then now I could generate another one. So I could say gen and then description stop. So I could do it like this. So instead of having it generate uh, everything into one line, I could say, okay, put a comma, put a description. So that way it's more possible for me. Maybe I'm writing some sort of regex. I said, look, at, look, look for words. And I said, take out the keys and then description should be another one. Now, th there's many reasons you would do that. But here I sort of guarantee its structure by providing that. In fact, I could even guarantee the structure of this by adding a few more tricks here. So one thing I could do is I could say add square bracket and just to follow the format of this. So this is the format, right? So I add this in and here is my one, two, three each. So what I can do is I can use the special index uh, syntax to say it starts from index. So the first time it's gonna run this gen each, it's gonna be zero and then zero and then you generate a, a, one of the command and then give it a description and then one and then description again the command description to the, again the command the description. And this is really nice. So let's run all of this as a sanity check. Let, let's say Python demo 12.pi and now it's done. So you have the zero, one, two, three, right? So if you look at the dashes here, now the first one is the result. And the result is just gonna be this. What are the top 10 most common used in the Linux operating system? Provide a one liner description. Okay, so first observation is that it passed the Linux into this one and it generate this. But it doesn't generate the, a few example because if you see, what happened is it skips off all of that. It skips all of that, it goes straight to the here are the common commands. So what happened to this block? So why is this line printed but not this line? Well, because you put everything into the block hidden equals to true. So none of this actually gets printed out, all right? But then it jumps all the way to the here are the common commands and now let's see, zero, because I said it starts from zero, right? And then it generate the ls, it says description, is the list directory contents, that's correct. cd, change directory, pwd, print working directory, and make zero. And so it generates all of them up to 10 of them, so it, start, it stops at nine, all right? Then it says, here are the top uh, five most common commands. So one thing you realize is that now the top five most common command also changes because now it uses the format that you see up there. So this is great because I prompt it from here, I prompt it in here and I give it the description and now I said, well, from there, generate the top five most common, uh, common command and now I give it this kind of structure that I will ask for. Suppose that in your prompt exercise, suppose that this is really what you want, then you can also hit, hide all of this into the block structure. So sort of this, like this. So you're hiding everything into the hidden equals the true block and now you're only getting the top five most common, all right? In fact, you probably also, also hide this, right? So you also don't wanna show this, you just wanna go straight to the answers. So that's also one use case for that. Now let's move everything back in order. Now I specify hidden equals to true, but I did specify examples in here. So if I print out the examples, I can actually see the answers in here. So this is actually hidden, right? So I said, well, this is the first one, PWD prints the working directory, and then MV used to move a rename file, and we literally stands for move, but I asked it to generate two more, and it generates two more. So the first one, CD changes the current working directory, LS lists information about files, and, and, then, C, and then now it generates another one. CP copies a file from location to another, and the four, pseudo executes A. And it runs out of tokens, because here I'm only giving it um, tokens of 20. So it runs out of tokens, it didn't complete the entire um, fourth command for me, right? So you can actually use this key value 
by looking uh, yeah, you just to pull out what you need so you can pull out exactly what you need from the commands you can say commands you can say i want to pull out this um so you can do that as well this here doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because i'm putting them the same so this is actually overriding that so you want to have like commands too for example um, in this case i'm just going to delete this one now suppose I want this to be a teaching program. So this is a CLI tool, right? I'm giving you some tips for the day, but I also want to give you a quiz. I said, well, do you want to test yourself? You want to see you know, whether you uh, truly know Linux commands or not, right? So I could say something like quiz of the day and then ask you to answer a simple quiz. I said, okay, maybe you, now that you think you know Linux, maybe I can ask you a few questions. So explain the following comments for three points. I'm going to change that as well in a second. Now, I want the comments to be somewhere from the earlier comments. So there are 10 of them. And I want to say randomly pick three of them, pick three of these comments and put them in here and ask them to qu quiz the user. So I don't want to show the description. I only want to show the, 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 the command. I want to say explain ls to me, explain mv to me, explain cp to me, all right? So here I could now use the each and then immediately close the each, all right? And what's really cool about guidance is that I can even pass in another function. So I could say something like pick uh, let's say P3. Now, P3 doesn't exist, but I can specify that in Python code, right? And I say pass the commands into P3. So commands is actually from here. I say pass it into P3, but where is P3 from? That's not even defined. So in the program, I could have a P3, and I, just to keep things simple, I'm going to use a lambda. I generally don't recommend using a lambda. I, generally, I recommend writing a function and, and actually naming a function. But in this case here, I'm just going to say take set x. So here is going to find the commands which is from here, which we printed out earlier, right? These are all the commands. So I'm saying take all of them, take all of them, and then set them. Why set them? Because I don't want to have any repeat. So I'm here, I'm sort of trying to give it more assurance to make sure that my output doesn't contain any duplicate because sometimes LM tends to do that. It tends to give you repeat um, you know, query. So you say ls, mvcp, and then you go to ls again. I don't want that. So I'm saying take the set, and this is very common to sort of deduplicate the stuff, right? and then just randomly take the first tree or something. This whole thing, I'm gonna call it uh, a function called pick tree, and then I pass it pick tree. Now pick tree take one argument, which is just x, and that is gonna be from commands, which is from here. So that's really awesome, you can do that. So now in the each block, you expect to have three of them because zero, one, two, right? You expect to have three of them. This is the pick tree command, um, which you wrote yourself. Now I could also specify my own stuff. So in this case here, I would just copy what I have up there, which is the index. Instead of actually putting them in square bracket, I'm just gonna put a dot. So this is gonna be one dot, but it's gonna start from zero dots, which is pretty weird because the index starts from zero. So you're gonna have like zero dot, one dot, two dot. So that's not very conventional. So I can actually say plus one. So the zero plus one is gonna be one. So it's gonna begin with one dot and then uh, two dot and three dot. It's gonna, it looks more natural and we're more used to seeing that. Right? Then the next is just a like this. This is similar to what you see up there. So it's just prepending the one dot, this, two dot, this, three dot, this. In fact, you're not even limited by how many functions you want to pass in. So suppose I want to change this and I want to say, take this and insert a random point here. So I don't want to say three points because that's like hard coded, who hard code stuff anyway, right? So explain the following commands for three points. Now again, I'm giving it some sort of structure. I'm guaranteeing some sort of structural integrity while giving it the enough freedom to use the LLM to generate the free flowing languages and stuff within the constraints of the structure that I provided, right? So here I have the random points and how do I, this is not specified anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and also specify that in here. So let me go ahead and use uh, import random. And then I'm gonna say random points equals to random dot ran in. That's random integer. So just get me a number between one to five. I don't really care, just a number between one to five and then use that and specify, pass that into random points and this is gonna fit into this text here. So explain the following commands for any random more points. If you can complete them, you get these points, that's it. Right? Just gamify things a little bit. And before I run this, I also wanna have this being randomized because since we're gamifying stuff, we might as well go to full gamification. So I don't want to have to have a hard-coded uh, quiz flavor. I wanna change things up. Every day you open the program, it should give you a different kind of flavor. So I'm gonna specify some flavor text right up here. I'm gonna say flavor text or quiz flavor. And I'm gonna ask it to pick from one of this value. So here I have quiz of the day, right? And then I have a few more. I say test your knowledge. Here is a quiz. And then one that is slightly more snarky, maybe you think, you know, Unix, right? So just four of them, um, doesn't matter, you can have as many as you want. So I'm just saying that this is quiz flavor. 
then I'm gonna go in here and pass that in to my program quiz flavor equals to quiz flavor so every time my LLM runs I want it to just select one for me right so just choose one for me and so for that I'm gonna use the select syntax and then select what select a flavor so um, you, you can call it quiz flavor if you want to be consistent I can just name it flavor this is um, you know whatever you name it this is kind of a variable name there anyway uh, but here the options this is not up to you this one you have to specify what you pass in here so we name it quiz flavor so let's say quiz flavor so what this will do this select is going to select from one of the quiz flavor where is this from uh, it's up here right so it's going to select one of the flavor and then it says explain the following commands for whatever random points this is a random number um, the random number is generated from here so let's save all of this and take a look all right so command variable flavor not found and that is because this is a capital F so we will need to change this to a capital F okay let's run that and now it's done all right so let's take a look okay so here's the result what are the top 10 most common commands used in the Linux operating system for a long liner description so here is ls list direction context okay so all this we've seen before um, all right now here is a quiz okay so here is the quiz is actually a random number from a random uh, selection from here so instead of picking quiz of the day or test your knowledge, it picks the third option, which is here is quiz. That's, that's great. And then it asks, it gives you, explain the following commands for random points included. So again, it uses my structure. It allows me to just interweave my structure with the prompt. It gives enough room for LLM to just be, you know, be, be, gen be, be creative, but within following a certain specified structure and uh, giving you some sort of output. And that's really cool. So here it says, explain the following commands for four points, but where is the four from? That's just a random Python, um, you generate a random number, right? And then now it gives you three different options. Instead of starting from zero, you see, in, at the top it starts from zero. See that? At the top it starts from zero. But instead it starts from a one dot. So how do you start from one? Because I just take index and I say at one. So zero becomes zero plus one becomes one. All right. Then it asks you to explain the tree. Now I don't have a description because you're not supposed to see the description. You're supposed to explain them for me to get the four points. And this is the kind of tooling that the guidance provides you. So when it says it allows you to just control your language models uh, more efficiently and more effectively, this is what it allows you to do. Instead of just trying to do prompting or chaining just one big prompt, you know, uh, in, in traditional, when you do prompt engineering, you have this one big prompt and you try to put everything in nature English, like, uh, you know, please do this and please assume the role of this or whatever. Uh, this guidance program is a bit more robust. It says you can interweave your generation, your prompting, your logical control, all of that into a flow, into a continuous flow, right? And you know what's really great about this kind of tool is that now you have more assurance and you have some more guarantee that you can generate synthetically a valid a format, for example, JSON, right? Now I could say something like, okay, use the commands above as input, generate a valid JSON object that maps each command to its description, okay? And just to help it a bit, I could open up like a, maybe a, a beginning of that. I can say, okay, I'm going to start this off for you. I will have different, different keys. So the first key is the, you know, the, the key here would be the Linux, all right, OS. So I want this to be just OS. This is kind of the same thing up here, right? Taking the OS. So again, using that uh, templating. So that's the first key. And then now this would be an array. And within the array, now I would say generate each. So I can say generate each and then generate each one. And here you can say commands, you can name it anything, you could say uh, instead of JSON, I say object, and I say number of iterations equals to one, so just generate one. Now, if you actually seen a JSON before, right, in this array, how do you specify an array? You actually separate them by comma. After each line, you want to have a comma, so you say uh, A comma B comma C, but you don't want a comma to appear before A, because A is the first item. So I could say unless, so basically negating the first one, unless it's the first one, right? Then again, immediately close the unless. So unless it's the first one, you can add a comma to it. Uh, it makes no sense to add comma A comma B comma C, but it makes sense after A. So A comma B comma C comma, right? So unless it's the first one, um, then, you know, don't bother adding. So close out the genage, and then within the genage, you can now uh, have the same thing again. We explained this before. You can just have your this. So that's a nice looking um, sort of opening for it, right? And you can ask it to complete that for you. Um, you probably don't even need this. It would know smart enough to complete that for you. So let me save all of that. Um, move into my terminal. Let's run that. So yeah, we see all of that above. Um, here are the top 10 most common commands. I give you 10 of them. Here is a quiz. Now it picks the 
Oh, again, pick the third option. But now, instead of the random number generating the fourth, you generate the first one point. So explain the following commands. Instead of the four points, you get one point now for chmod, grab, and pwd. So if you think you're, you're using Linux and you want to get more familiar with using Linux, try your hands on the, some of these quizzes and see if you can explain all of them to yourself. Now let's test out the JSON, right? So there's a JSON, okay? So here's a string. Um, here's a JSON object, and then there's a Linux, okay, that's okay. And then there's a array and an ls, list directory contents. Everything seems good. It closed out the array. You see, the thing is that with all of this uh, facilities it provides you, um, you can be more assured about uh, the kind of output you can get. And this is not too much to learn, right? These are all pretty intuitive. You know, you can have a, a simple example laying around and it's pretty intuitive to learn. So I, I would say, you know, this is a lot of value. Um, and you know, the only dependency is to just add guidance into it and that's kind of it. Now, you can't really talk about top tier prompt engineering without mentioning the idea of using rows or in chat based models like ChatGPT. So chat models have typically been tuned to expect this kind of like row text uh, in the prompt, which is why you see a lot of prompt examples. They, they, they start off with like, you are a financial advisor, uh, do this for me, or you are a real estate agent, you know, assuming the role of this, you know, do this. So when you see Guru selling you 500 courses of prompt engineering, it's basically nonsense beyond just the first five minutes of telling you about the, you know, train of thought process, the step-by-step, -step, and then, uh, you know, telling you about roles and stuff. And, and really all you're doing is, is the three or four different techniques, right? Anything else basically just fluff. Right. So specifying the role and say, hey, assume the role of a real estate agent or assume that you are a financial advisor and do this, right? or you're a university professor, do this, um, that, that's one. And then the next one is basically step by step. Right? You can, uh, sometimes people call this guided prompt engineering or use like fancy names like chain of reasoning or multi-step reasoning, you know, all of this stuff. But what you really do is you break down the problem into steps and then uh, get your LM model to take these incremental steps towards the final answer. So I'm gonna show you both of these as well using a chat-based model. So I'm gonna actually duplicate this, I'm gonna copy that, um, rename this. So I'll delete almost all of this, um, just keeping up the first six, seven lines of code. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to, instead of the text that we see 003, I will change this to a chat-based model. And one of the chat-based model is GBD 3.5, 3.5-tubo, right? Now I want to specify that if you don't want to use GPT for any of this, some of you have left comments in my uh, channel on the, on the videos and say that I don't want to use OpenAI GPT because it costs a lot of money and stuff. Well, you can use one of the uh, free ones, right? So you could use a Transformers. This will go into all the hugging face models. You can use one of the hugging face models. So one of them is the Stability AI model and there's the st Stable LM base alpha Okay, so there are two in here. So this one is a 7 billion model. So you can have stable LM base alpha 7 billion. And the other one is a 3 billion model. So pick whichever one that works on your computer, right? If, if your computer, you don't have that kind of GPU space, you can't have a 7 billion model running, then just use the 3 billion model one. And then just say device equals the CPU. Um, I think 3 billion is probably light enough that it would run on most people's computer. But if again, you go into any error, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to you know give you more advice uh, depending on what kind of hardware um, you have, right? But if you can spare the 7 billion, just go ahead and just do a 7 billion. That's also one option. This is the open source model. You can use a transformer, uh, goes to hugging face and put it on your computer's cache, right? So uh, pick one. I'm gonna stick to GPT 3.5 Turbo because uh, even comparing some of the open source model, this one still gives me better performance and it needs to be a chat based model. So that's why I'm sticking to uh, 3.5 Turbo. Now the two different techniques, the first one is assuming row basis, like giving it a row, right? And then the next one is doing this step by step. So I'm gonna show you both. So again, let's let's talk about the 10 different Linux commands again, to use the same idea. But this time, how will we do this um, in the context of a chat-based model? So I'm gonna say guidance, right? Not gonna have anything in here yet, but let's just call the function. So result equals to program, and that's just gonna call it, right? And again, we have the OS equals to Linux, so let's keep to that. I mean, you can change this to Mac OS. I don't use Mac OS anymore, I use Linux, so I'm gonna stick to Linux. Then I'd like to just print the result to see uh, what I get from here. Okay, now let's focus on the guidance. Now you can specify rows because they're also available in guidance. So I can say something like system. This is where I set up the context. So I can say something like you are a CS professor, computer science professor, and teaching Unix systems administration to your students. Uh, actually not Unix, but it should be OS. Telling GPT, you say, hey, you are a CS professor teaching Mac systems administration to your Windows. No one actually do system admin on Macs. You either do it on Windows or on Linux, mostly it's on Linux. And then I want to close that out, so system. So you can see the pattern here is that it's generally very consistent, right? You start that off and then you close it. And then you can now say, okay, now this is the user's um, 
input itself. So the user who is chatting with you, the GPT, right? That is the user itself. So this is the, you know, where you write your queries and stuff. So in this case here, the user is gonna ask, what are some of the most common uh, commands used in, again, I don't wanna hard code it. So again, we can say OS, which is templating, provide a one-liner description. You could also maybe say list the commands and their descriptions uh, one per line, number then starting from one. So instead of asking you to start from zero, or instead of using that that uh, you know this notation to you can you can use this as well. You can say index and then plus one, just sort of have one each. But here I'm gonna try and hope that GPT 3.5, um, which is ChatGPT, is gonna be smart enough to not have me to do that, but just gonna uh, give me the one uh, base indexing. Now I want to mention one thing about um, the tilde sign. I can also add tilde sign here. And what does this mean? So this is the white space control operator, right? So again, it's it's all part of the handlebar syntax. If you use Jinja or anything like that, you've probably seen this before. So this allows you to remove the white space within the block itself. So the tilde sign here says that remove the white space uh, either before or after attack. So I can add it here, I can add it here as well, right? So there's gonna be any white space um, will be removed, making the program looks actually a little bit prettier um, without including too many excessive white space in the prompt. Okay, so we explained the system, we explained the user, but what about the GPT itself? Now that is known as the assistant. So we're gonna call it assistant. I'm gonna remove the white space. And here I just wanted to generate. I just say, just generate commands, man. Right, just generate commands. And maybe the max token should be 100 or maybe 60 or 80, just control it. Um, so here are the system, here is the user and here's the assistant. Then I want, because this is a step-by-step -step process, I'm showing you two techniques at the same time. I'm showing you the role, I'm showing you the step-by-step -step as well. You can either include your chain of thoughts process here, with TLT, COT, you can include those things. You can also just maybe just continue asking, prompting. Um, so for example, I can ask a follow-up question. Now I can say, I'm take the user. I could say, wait, look at all of these commands there. Which among these commands are beginners most likely to get wrong. Explain why the command might be confusing and then ask assistant to do the same thing. So just repeat that again. Um, but here you wanna give it a different name. I wanna say this is confusing commands and maybe this one should be a little bit lower, 60. Now, if you can also specify a separate LLM. So there are two LLMs in play here. So the first one is the guidance itself. It needs an LLM, right? To sort of use that to power this whole program. But then there is also a second LLM that you can control in here. You can say, well, I want an LLM to be uh, whatever you have here. So you can you can have the whole thing being transformers, but this itself, you know, you want this to run inside uh, OpenAI GPT-3, for example, right? So if you want to do that, you can say chat, and then you specify your model. This could just copy from here, or you know, copy from here, just to keep things simple and keep the video short. I'm just gonna try and copy this from here, but you could try different, different models in here. I'm just gonna keep it to the same thing. You know, just type this, and then just have all of this into chat. This also works, right? Without running too much things, let's just run all of this and see how it works, all right? So let's just go and say Python. Now, this is demo 13 now, so that demo 13.py, and let's run that. We accidentally move out one of the user. So let's bring this back. So one of the things is that when you try to code this up really fast on the go, sometimes you tend to make one of those two small mistakes, let's fix that. But the, the error is pretty helpful. Perhaps the block command was not correctly closed. So you found out that I did not really close it properly. So you gave me that. So the assistant starts the system. You are a CS professor teaching Linux system. So I could actually hide all of this. I could say this is hidden equals to, because I don't really need to see all that, but it's here already. So what are some of the most common commands used in the Linux operating system? And then here's the assistant, and then it prints that out, um, give you explanations to each one of them. And also notice that I said number them starting from one, and it did that job correctly. And then I have um, user, and then I have the assistant. So user, which among these commands are beginners most likely to get wrong? So I'm asking you to look at all the top, the, the top 10 in here. You could, you know, maybe have something like set, specify a unique, you know, just like what you did there with the set, list set, um, just like what you did here with the list set, you could try to make sure that these are none of them are repeating. Uh, in this case here, just a quick scan shows you that none of them are repeating. But if you use a older model, you may see a lot of repeating. You know, if you use GPT-2 or GPT-3, you may expect some of the repeating in here. I don't know. But uh, in that case, you could just specify a function that goes like unique, you know, just like choose unique or something. And then you could just use it in your program. Uh, but in this case here, it does okay. 
and then you follow up the question with which among these commands are beginners most likely to get wrong? Explain why the command might be confusing. Show example code to illustrate your point. Okay, so beginners are most likely to get the rm command wrong. It is This is because the rm command is used to remove files or directories and it does not have an undo option. If a user accidentally remove uh, deletes a file or directory using the rm command, it cannot be easily recovered. So this kind of a step-by-step -step process, instead of finding out this one directly, I'm asking you to generate 10 first and then from there pick up like two or three that are wrong and then uh, from there, you know, generate uh, a follow-up question. So you can do that in this kind of uh, interface as well and all of this can still be within a template that you need to fit. Right. So earlier we see you can even have this as a JSON, you can try XML, you can try to export to a CSV, but you can now sort of provide a structure, make it possible for you to interleave your generation, your prompting, and your logical control into a single continuous flow. Um, it gives you some examples here. So give you an example, this one uses text WNC. It says tweak the following proverb to apply to model instructions, and you give it a proverb, um, then you know here is your templating. This is something that we've seen before. Select is something you've seen before as well. Um, here is a select chapter. One or two small issues. So if you look at this, for example, I opened an issue some time ago, uh, three days ago. Uh, I said that the select example doesn't really work like that. So if you put a select right now and you say select 9 or 10 or 11, ask it to pick from one of these values, it doesn't really work. It would just end up with something very awkward like this, like 9, 10, 11, 12, and then um, 10 is selected. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 10. Uh, this is not what you want. So the workaround is to specify them as a separate option and then specify them into the options itself. Um, so that's something that I showed you there. So if you follow this video, this will work, but if, uh, uh, unless this gets patched, but right now there is no one who attend to the issue right now. So some of the documentation, if you were to follow it strictly, um, it will not work directly. Um, so you will need to do some work around. So for example, this one that shows you the 10, or this, this doesn't really work and it's already an issue I created on GitHub. Then there's the chat dialog. This is the system, this is the user, and then there's a, this is, uh, these are things that you've seen before. Then I mentioned as well that you can use one of the, you can use any kind of a, a model here. So you don't have to use GPT if you don't want to. You could use Llama 7 billion as well. So you set up transformers that I've, I've shown you that as well. And then you generate a JSON and then ask this guy to make a character. So this is a character profile and you can then specify all of them. And then you just have to call character maker and it will always give you this valid JSON. And that's great. You know, you can, you can always have this kind of assurance that what you get here is at least going to be uh, at least, you know, at the very least, it's going to be some sort of semantic JSON. Maybe some of the values are not correct, you know, maybe the select weapon, uh, it's not really, um, uh, not what you want, but at least, you know, it's valid JSON because you have some sort of structure around that using guidance. And so what it ends up doing is it says, well, here is what you want and uh, the mantra, I will protect the weak. So there's a lot of things here. It's a pretty exciting project. Uh, you see nine hours ago, there's a new merge pull request. So yeah, it's a pretty exciting project. And so I would say if you want to spend time learning prompt engineering, don't drop any money onto any of this, like, oh, you know, ask you to write uh, better prompts, you know, teaching you how to write better prompts, or, which really goes down to writing better English, you know, be more accurate in your descriptions, be more detailed. Those are, those are a bit, um, you know, a bit BS. No, no offense to those people selling those courses, but you know, I just, I, I can't respect that kind of hustle. What I encourage you to do instead is to pick up uh, guidance, um, and use this as a starting template and just go and really learn about that and really try to think about how you would do problem design from a software perspective and the opportunities that comes with that. So that's all I have time for today. Um, hope you learned something new. I'm going to see you in the next video.